There, here comes another uh, DZ, DZ thought here. I don't know if this is true. I'm just pulling this out of the back of my you know what all of a sudden just now. Rapidly eroding Gallup uh, recent survey shows a record low 36% of Americans believe in Powell's economic acumen. Uh, so a lot of people are saying, hey, this guy does not know what he's doing. Alan Greenspan, I remember being bullish on that guy. Then Bern Bernanke, then uh, Janet Yellen, and then we have Jerome Powell uh, at some point. Hey, it's getting us out of this COVID situation. Okay. Hey, they print a lot of money. Hey, what's that's a lot of money. Jesus Christ, have you seen how much money they're printing? And so now we're at a record low, 36%, uh, lowest in many, many years here. The power of belief in the Fed's commitment is substantial. Should Jerome Powell pledge to curtail the soaring inflation rates, for instance, the public's faith in his promise can provoke behavioral changes, effectively setting a self-fulfilling prophecy in motion. Hey, maybe we'll start believing him eventually. The public's awareness of inflation, which is generally unwelcome, is a clear indicator of the Fed Reserve's challenges. If the public loses faith in Powell's messaging, it might herald more significant concerns. There, here comes another uh, DZ, DZ thought here. I don't know if this is true. I'm just pulling this out of the back of my you-know-what all of a sudden just now. What do you think of this thesis, though? I think with internet, financial literacy, on the rise, uh, maybe newscasters talking about it and just, you know, seeing with Bitcoin, you know, education of inflation is on the rise. Look at this chart again. Do you think this chart is inverse to the amount of people learning about inflation for the first time ever? So back then, probably not that many people knew about it. Now we're coming in at 36%, maybe more and more people know about it. So mm. this would come in uh, suggesting 64% of people are saying, hey, this is uh, something wrong is going on right now. Versus back here, you're looking at 25% of people. And so I, I think there might be a little correlation with the amount of people who know what inflation actually is with our confidence in uh, some of these Fed chairs. So that's, that's, uh, that's my two cents there. We'll be integrated with Metal Blockchain, according to a May 11th announcement from the Metal Blockchain team. Uh, so the integration will allow users to instantly convert funds to stablecoin and back again using FedNow's send receive function. Uh, as a crypto network developed by not Metallica, Metallicus, this is when you have multiple Metallicas, based on a fork of Avalanche's code. It was created to offer compliance friendly options for. Uh, DeFi developers in the May 11th announcement, developers claim that the network is built on the foundation of BSA compliance, implying that it has identity verification and anti-money laundering features built in. So this is going to be uh, the, the Fed's blockchain of choice, heavy uh, KYC, uh, heavy surveillance, and uh, I, don't, I don't think that we're going to see too much adoption by the crypto industry, but uh, it will be uh, interested to see Will this eventually uh, replace all wire transfers when you try to go to a bank? You know, are we going to mm -hmm. see more and more of this Fed now? I'm leaning towards yes. I think it is going to be, uh, you know, the gateway to the CBDCs. I think a lot of you guys are, uh, you know, also reading between the lines here. We know how this is going to play out, and it's going to play out with them probably trying to put controls on your money. And so we're going to watch them. We're going to fight it. And, uh, yeah, we're like an army of Metallicas. We're going to shred them to pieces here. Should I buy my first bag of ICP? I've never held ICP. I bought a little ICP. I bought 25 of them at five bucks. It's 125 bucks. Not some big bag. Maybe I'm going to try to accumulate. Maybe I'll try to get up to 100, then maybe 250, then maybe 500, then maybe 1,000. I don't know where I'm going to go with this thing, but it's something I'm watching, and I, I think there's potential for you know a 10x. I think it can hit 50 bucks again. Uh, the top of the bull run is projected to be September to November 2025. So this, these price predictions are for that, just so if anyone didn't know. So for Matic, I'm saying 7 to $8. Is that too high or too low? 
All right, so Maddox, seven to eight dollars. That's a, a round number ten. Oh, I was like, why? Why is it not working? I was on top gainers. That's a around eleven, I believe. Uh, hey, it is number eleven exactly. All time chart. You said, would you say eight dollars? Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, I, yeah. I can see a uh, a two point five x, which is seven dollars and fifty cents. So yeah, we're we're pretty much right in line with this one. Awesome, awesome. All right, for Dogecoin, um, while Ben said exactly one dollar, I'm saying sixty to sixty-five cents because of how much you know. Fourteen million Doge are minted every day. The market cap has a lot of work to do to catch that supply, which is why I said sixty to sixty-five cents for Doge. I think if it's timed correctly with the bull market, and Elon says you can now interact with Doge on Twitter. Everybody was given one doge for free, something like that. I, I feel like the sell pressure at 69 cents may never be surpassed. So I'm not trying to make it a meme. I, I, I think it's 69 cents. Fair. All right. We're right. We're right. Basically aligned on that one. So for XRP, I said nine to eleven dollars. As long as with the caveat that they win the case against right. the SEC. Okay. So XRP wins the case at the most bullish time. I don't think it can go above $5. Okay, that's fair. See, Ben and I talked about this, and originally I was more conservative, but he has a much larger range than I do. His range was actually, um, where is that? A 7 to $20. He gave a very large range, but it's because of how how far it could go if it really catches on. So I, I see why he did that. Um, so for Cardano, I know we're both very big on Cardano. I said 5 to $7. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming in right along there. I'm, I'm thinking six. I think we can hit six because, you know, 309, 320, I don't know, it hit above $3. It's it's hard for me to imagine uh, it can't hit six because something about Cardano is like people are thinking in the terms of four bull runs from now, five bull runs from now, 10, 20 years yes. from now. Whereas, you know, like a meme coin, you're thinking five days from now, five five minute candles right. from now. And so, yeah, it's uh, also this... The easy staking, it's like, oh, man, do I really want to give up that ADA that I get every five days and sell some? Right. I think I'll just wait. Totally. And so I, mm -hmm. I, I think it. I think $6, but I don't see it going above 10 so I'm in a 6 to $9 range, $0.42. Cents. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people in the Cardano community, like, have their eyes set on that psychological $10. And in the future, for sure, way down the road, I can completely see waking up and seeing a $10 Cardano, Cardano one day. But for this next bull run, I don't know if it's possible for it to run that high. But I'm hopeful, never, uh, nevertheless. So final uh, last one is H bar. I'm saying a dollar forty-five to two eighty. I know that's a bigger range, but there's reasons for that because of, of their partnerships and whatnot. All right. I, well, the the best thing they have going for them is uh, the community has a cool nickname, uh, and you the H bar barbarians. Kinda, yeah, kind of joke, but I'm I'm really not joking because at the end of the day, these things really matter to retail. And so yeah. I remember 2019, 2020, Link Marine just sounded cool. Oh, man, a Link Marine. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking the same thing with the Barbarians. Like, hey, man, I'm an H Barbarian. Yeah. It yeah. just has that, it, that, it's awesome. that retail narrative where people can get behind it, similar to a Pepe, similar to a Doge. I look at the all-time chart. I'm seeing 50 cents. What was your price prediction there? Um, it, I said a dollar forty-five to two eighty, considering their partnerships, Google Cloud. The list goes on and on. Be sure to watch the H Bar video that dropped two weekends ago if you haven't watched it. Uh, I am going to go a little more bullish. So you're saying a three X from previous all-time high. I'm going as high as five yeah. X. I'm going to say two fifty. So I this love is it. like our first divergence just... here. Well, I said one forty-five to two eighty. So you're in my uh, range. Okay. 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 Yeah. True. <clears throat> All right. It's awesome. And, uh, all right, awesome, before man. we so end one more it, man, th or go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say one more thing. You know, we kind of had a dip lately. A lot of people I saw, there was a poll in the chat, like, are you buying the dip? Are you not buying the dip? So this time around, I just wanted to say that I am going to buy this dip. I'm kind of switching away from my normal DCA uh, program, which is AHA Crypto, which stands for uh, Algorand HBAR Cardano. For this DCA this week, I'm going to switch to HIPAA, and it's not Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It's uh, HBAR, ICP, Polygon, and ADA, and I have the like math it. done because you want to make a plan 
before you set your trade. So HBAR is 36% back to seven cents. I ICP is 19% back to $6. Polygon is 20% back to a dollar and ADA is 26% back to the 45 cent to retest that double top. If you average those percentages together, that's a 25% gain if it gets to those ranges. If you put in say $4,000, a thousand in each coin at those price points and those targets are reached, we made a thousand dollars sell everything rinse repeat boom boom just like that Two things. that's my One, targets that's be what I'm selling. careful be careful selling strong coins after 20 cent pumps it takes me back to all the two dollar chain link i bought that i sold for three to four dollars and i'm a genius yes. oh my god 50 percent pump 100 percent <laughs> pump i'm the world's smartest person and then goes to 50 dollars. Right. so i would just caution well, my idea not every coin your they're favorite going to retest coins. those levels Okay. The All idea right. is that when they retest those levels, it's probably going to come down and retrace. So that's just a targeted trade for a 25% gain. That that was my idea. All right. Well, uh, here's goal, my stick uh, to the plan. here's my reasoning for buying a little ICP. I bought my first ICP today. I bought 25 of them at five bucks a piece, 509s, whatever, 515. Strong community. I know several people who have talked to founders and team. They are always impressed. Way down from previous all time high. And lastly. Although this should be the number one metric, markets don't care, however, would be the tech. Always hear a strong tech, always hear a strong team, uh, way down from all-time high, strong community. I mean, the, these four reasons enough to hold a coin for two years, in your opinion? I, I really like ICP. I'm very big on ICP. I have a bag of it. Um, I'm doing a why on Sunday. You will see my price prediction for that coin. Why I'm so big on it. I actually talked to someone on the team yesterday for a little while. I got some alpha on ICP. I mean, I'm, I'm here for it. hundred percent. All right. Someone uh, just said it's a long-term downtrend. It certainly is. But when we look at the one year it, chart, uh, you look at the it reason looks like why that maybe, yeah, it might be a bottom in December. It could be, I'm not saying it is. But when I look at this chart and this is a one year chart and I bought this little dip right here and I see a higher low and I see, you know, maybe this is important. It's already kind of trading in this channel of five dollars, which already has tested back here, tested back here, tested back here. Feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. So, yep. uh, hey, uh, it could go awesome. down. I, I respect your opinion. But I with that reasoning that I just gave those four reasons and I looked at the chart, I'm, I'm leaning bullish. So if you see a downtrend that yep. isn't reversing, I see maybe a, a little glimmer of hope. Yeah, right. me too. I'm bullish on ICP for sure. 100%. All right. Thank uh, you, DZ. Dude, Appreciate AJ, it. Man. Always a good time. Man, we do like yep. each other, guys. It's, we, we just uh, have fun. You guessed it. The 2018 Hinman speech and the XRP lawsuit. Uh, seen here measuring DZ. Uh, did former SEC officials have crypto-related conflicts of interest when they were at the commission? Yes, we already know that. Lawsuit alleges that Hinman received a pension from Simpson Thatcher while at the SEC linking back to a 2021 insider report. While Hinman was at the SEC, the law, uh, the law firm was an Enterprise Ethereum Alliance member. Give me a place to stand on and I will move the earth. That's right. Give me a long enough lever. You can change everything. You can move everything. Today, we live in an age of infinite leverage. Back in the day, leverage happened in small increments. Uh, you would have the first person, you know, trying to grow some crops, all of a sudden, someone made a hoe, someone made a shovel. And then all of a sudden, they were able to leverage their labor 2x, 3x. They're planting twice as many crops as the next guy. Then you also have a bow and arrow. That is leveraging that little stone tip before we're chucking spears at that woolly mammoth. And then someone said, hey, you know what? I got a little string right here out of this little thing. Boing! Made a little noise. Boom. What do we have? We have bows and arrows. So leverage has existed since the dawn of man when... The one K, the first homo sapien picked up a stick and hit the second homo sapien. That's how long we've had leverage as, uh, as a society here. And I, I see it in today's age, and it is limitless leverage. Previous industries, you would get a 5X, you would get a 10X, you could, you could leverage, you know, you have a, a guy chopping down trees, you give him a sharper ax, guess what? Maybe he's like 1.5 uh, productivity. But now you give someone an AI tool, they can thousand X their leverage. You give them, uh, you know, uh, the ability to code. They can code Facebook and trillion X their leverage. They can trillion X their output with the tools that we have in society. We have media and we have code. And these are the two main things. And now I would say there's a third category and that is AI assistance. Before you can only leverage, uh, hey, the tools in your hand, 
then you could do human labor, then you could do capital. But now we're in the age of, I can make one video. I'm gonna say Mr. Beast, not me. Mr. Beast can make one video. It gets seen 250 million times. Did he make that video 250 million times? No, he made it once. YouTube leveraged it 250 million X. That is a huge leverage. We went from 5X to hundreds of millions X, billions X, trillions X. And right now there's no excuse to not create the type of world that you want to live in. There's no excuse to not get to the level that you want to get. I don't, I don't, I don't care if you're, you're banging away on a keyboard with your nose. There's things you can do right now. You can leverage your abilities. You can leverage your brain. You can leverage your output. You can leverage everything that you ever do. Thousand X, million X, trillion X. Choice is up to you. The tools are out there. You just got to use them. Let's get out of the cave. Let's start leveraging things and uh, use a stop loss if you do leverage trade. That's all I got.